Hi guys, thanks for joining me for another video. It's really good to be back because I've actually taken a small break with my family, but while I've been away, Luminar AI has released an update. So in this video, I wanted to share with you what that upgrade looks like. And if you haven't upgraded yet, to show you how easy it is to do that. And I think as a little bit of a tester, we'll use the photographs from while I was away on holiday just to see if I can improve those nice and quickly using the new Luminar AI setup. This one actually came away with us on our holiday. She's pretty exhausted. So I'm gonna put her back under the desk so she can chill and we'll dive into Luminar AI. Okay, so here we are inside of Luminar AI and this is exactly as I left it before I went away for a couple of days on holiday with my family. So this rather random set of photos here was for a bit of preparation work I was doing for a Star Wars themed photo shoot. Now I don't want to see anything to do with these photos, so very shortly I'll actually start a brand new catalogue and if you're not sure how to do that I'll show you that, but for now we'll just check whether Luminar is up to date. So if you come to the help section and then just come down to check for updates and we click that, you see this little area here, just does a quick check online and says, okay, Luminar version 1.01 .01 is currently the newest version available. Hopefully on launch, Luminar should check that anyway, but if it doesn't, you can invoke that check yourself. And I'd recommend that's just good practice now and again, just to have a double check, make sure you're using the latest version. So I'll click OK. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to start a new catalog. So I'll come up here again and I'm going to come to file catalog and I'm just going to start a brand new catalog. So I'm just creating a new folder here and I'll call that family photos. Open that folder and I can now name my Luminar catalog. So I'm going to call that Luminar AI catalog family photos. Now you will have seen that a brand new catalogue has been created and I strongly recommend that you do that to keep your different genres of photography, different things you're photographing in order. I prefer to work with smaller catalogues of images and keep things specific. So the first thing I want to do is import some photos. So if I click the add photos button, boom, we've now got this new section here. So we can either add a folder or add an image. So I'm gonna add a folder and I'm going to select my unsorted photos from this recent holiday. Now I don't want to beat up on the camera that I was using, but it's not one that I like. It's not one that I feel gives consistent results. So this could be a really good example because the exposures are all over the place. You can see the brightness levels, the meter within the camera just kind of does its own thing. So I feel this could be a good sample of images to show where Luminar really comes into its own because for me, these kind of family photos, they're not ones I wanna spend ages working on. They're just a little bit of fun. They're just recording the memories of being away. And I've wasted so much time in my life editing photos that really don't matter. They're just for me and they're just a documentation. So I wanna invest the bare minimum amount of time to get these looking acceptable. So how about I kickstart things with my little dog Maisie here. So I'll double click this and let's jump into templates everything's pretty much as it was inside of templates however now we do have these little arrows here in the to allow us to scroll left and right but the biggest change i believe is within the edit module yeah here we go so previously you would know that we had the essentials creative portrait and professional sections all split into different tabs that we could go into however now they've all been brought into one area and I think that's a really nice move just to have access to all of your editing tools all in one place. Directly below the editing section, the tools there, we can jump straight into local masking and now the history icon has been moved from that bottom right hand corner and we have access to that up here. So for me, I think the layout that was already pretty good, I was pretty impressed with how clean the design was for Luminar AI, but I think this is just an even easier way to lay things out and much more intuitive. This is actually a bit of a throwback to Luminar 3 because they used to have all the tools in one big long list and I really used to like that because I just scroll up and down, make my edits and I was done. So if you guys follow my videos, you'll know that one of the most powerful tools that I recommend people start with is actually the Enhance AI and just grabbing the Accent AI and cranking that to the right. And as you see with this one, if we look at our before, and our after. Just with that one slider, we've really made a marked improvement on this image. We've bumped up saturation, contrast, we've improved the exposure. There's so much going on just with that one slider from, to take it from this to this that I'm really pleased to see that Luminar have actually 
um, rearrange these because initially it was light that was the very first tab that you'd go into. And that does make sense from a more traditional editing standpoint because it gives you access to the color temperature, the exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, all of that good stuff. However, you'd make all these changes here and then jump into Enhance AI and often you'd be overcooking things straight away and you would have done a lot of work moving these sliders around and that really goes against what Luminar AI stands for which is making the process of editing so much easier for you. So the fact that this is here now, I think that's so much better because now we're able to play around with that slider and then once we're happy with those changes, we can just make absolute minimal adjustments within this section here. So I may just want to change the color temperature, let's say just ever so slightly, warm things up a bit. And while the Enhance AI has certainly helped improve the brightness level, I think that if we just crank the exposure up just a little bit, I think that photo having been taken from here with a kind of bluey green cast and a little underexposed to here, just with a couple of sliders, bam, we're done. Let's move on. Let's jump back to our catalog again. Okay. Okay, I'm just scrolling back through these photos just to see if there's other ones that I feel really need some help. So I really like these ones of my daughter here just sat on this tree branch. Tree trunk, perhaps, Anthony? But I feel that they are slightly underexposed. So let's have another play around with these. Let's jump into the edit tab. And you'll notice that I am omitting the templates option. And if you are just getting started with your photos, this really is a good place to start. As you'll be aware, you've got your recommendations from Luminar here as to what might work well for a particular photo. So the Essence collection may well be a really good starting point. Like if I click flawless here, that edit is applied. And if I look at a before and after, it is an improvement. But for me, I thoroughly enjoy playing around with all the tools inside of Luminar AI. So I actually prefer to make my own edits. So let's come into the edit tab. Let's jump into the history, just so we can reset things to the original state. And now let's start making some changes. So as I alluded to before, initially light was put right at the top of the essentials section. And so you probably would have jumped in here and start playing around with the exposure and probably feel like it needs to sit somewhere around there to brighten up my daughter's face here. And then you'd start working on things like your contrast and your color balance, things like that. But let's just reset that. And if I remember that was on 1.26, if I actually make my changes here in the Accent AI and boost that up, Okay, so we're introducing more detail and also a little bit more clarity into the tree stump here, which is quite interesting. So if I turn that off and on, I really like that Luminar's AI is introducing more details, but only in the relevant areas of the photo. And now I've leveraged this one slider. Now I feel like I'm in a good place to jump into the light section and now just boost that exposure. And you'll see that I'm not having to be as aggressive with this slider to get the results that I want. So this is our before. This is our after. I also find that this particular camera will often kind of block out the shadows and muddy them up a little bit. So if I get the shadow slider, if I push it to 100, you'll see that is far too much. But if I reset it, that probably is not enough. So if we start to just increase a little bit of this, maybe sit it around that 14 mark. And again, turn that off and turn that on. And I think that we're in a much better place with this photo. Nearly every photo benefits from increasing a little bit of the details and also sharpening things. So I will increase these details, actually not too much. Now if I zoom in to my daughter's face, we'll see that it is sharp, but I don't really feel that it's perhaps sharp enough. So let's push this sharpening to 100 and just see what Luminar does for us. So that sharpening is actually pretty nice. We're all the way at 100 and it's not really going too far over the top. But just to be on the safe side, I'll just pull it back a little bit. And I'm a fan of vignetting. So let's pop a little vignette on this. Let's bring our amount quite far down just to see what's going on. And I don't really want to bring the size in too much, but I do want to feather it off. So I'll grab the feathering slider. And you can see that as I feather it, it goes from a really hard transition into a much, much softer transition. And now I'll increase the size just so that it's not encroaching on our main subject here. Now we can ease that amount back. So if I just slowly start to increase it to a point where I feel like it's it's there, but it's subtle, perhaps at minus 38. Let's have a look off and on. By gosh, that is very subtle. Um, maybe we'll push it just a little further. And now I said that I wanted to get these edits done really quickly. So if I jump back into the catalog, what I'm going to do 
is actually copy the effects that I just created by coming to adjustments and copying those adjustments. Now I'm going to select all photos. I pressed control A, that's option A on the Mac and that's just a shortcut for selecting all. And then we can right click on any photo, go to adjustments and we're gonna paste the adjustments. And now we start to see these thumbnails pop with that adjustment. And you'll notice that my photos were slightly underexposed before. Just That's just the way the meter on that camera works. I could have compensated in camera. Um, but anyway, look, I was, I was on holiday. I wasn't going in pro mode. So I've made these changes. And just like that, these photos are starting to look a whole heap better. So for example, if I choose something that's completely different to what we were working on, like this home here, and we let Luminar AI analyze the photo and apply the effect. And you can tell it's doing that when the color band is running through that Luminar AI logo, like you saw just a moment ago, you know that the photo is actually being analyzed and Luminar is applying all the effects that you just synchronized with it. And now what we can do is just click our before and our after. And just like that, boom, you can see what a massive improvement. And that has taken me no time. I've just used Luminar's AI to leverage that edit. So from what I was seeing here in the catalog section, I feel like pretty much all of the photos were being improved. The only thing you may want to do is deselect the photos. And then if there's any problem photos like these two here of my daughter look a little overexposed now, you can double click them. Luminar analyzes them. And now we can come in and edit just individual photos and just make those slight adjustments. So in this one, I'm just gonna come back into the light section and just double click the exposure and that resets that to zero. And for this photo, that's a good fix. So let's look at our before and our after, nice. If you think that the edit is an improvement but you feel it's a little too much, also you can come down to the bottom right hand corner here and just reduce the slider, the amount slider. So you don't need it a hundred percent. You can just ease it to a point where visually you think, yeah, that's my sweet spot. I'll just jump back to the catalog and just see if there's any other photos like that. So for example, this photo that's very, very similar and was shot in the same way, same setup. All I need to do is just right click on this adjustments, copy adjustments and do the same again, come to adjustments and paste those adjustments and that's fixed. So I would say overall, I've done my full edit on that whole catalog and I'm ready to export those photos. And is that something that I haven't really shown before? What I'm gonna do is just do that quickly. So control A to select all of these photos, come to export. And now I want to come to save photo to disk. So now I'll choose my location. I'm a big fan of using the reverse date for naming your folders and put open that, select the folder. And here I get to choose my attribute. JPEG is a really great format to export in. It's a compressed file format. The quality is still really good and it's universally read. You can upload these photos to the internet, send them to a printer. Pretty much any image reader can read a JPEG. It's so universal. I've already done my sharpening inside of Luminar AI, so I don't want to do anything with the export. I'm not gonna do any resizing. I'm happy with the size they were, which were 24 megapixel files. If I know that I'm only wanting to upload these to the internet, maybe to Facebook or something, I may actually just choose the long edge to be something, let's say 1500 pixels, 2000 pixels, something like that. Exporting to the sRGB color space is a really safe bet and a good option. And your resolution, it's actually irrelevant. That only becomes an issue when you're actually printing things out. So the next slider is your quality. As I mentioned before, JPEG is a compressed format. So you can actually control the amount of quality that goes into the file. The higher the percentage of quality, the bigger the file size. So it's a trade-off between how big the files are and how much quality is in there. Personally, I would never think of saving a JPEG below about 75%, but at the same time, saving to 100% is just a waste of disk space. So personally, I find somewhere between 80 and 90 is a pretty happy medium. So let's go for 80 for these and hit export. Okay, so Luminar AI is now exporting 127 photos for me, and that can take a little bit of time. Now, a lot of people get a little bit antsy about this and it's really slow at exporting, but I'm okay with it and I'll tell you why. For me, I think 
I've just spent a little bit of time, minimal time investment to process one photo. I got that looking pretty good. And then I've said, hey, Luminar, can you do me a favor? Use your AI to process all of these family photos for me, get them looking good, and then export a final version for me with all those changes made. And rather than me having to sit there and individually work on sliders and boost contrast and change saturation, all of that stuff that I might need to do in Lightroom, I've basically outsourced that task. And while that's being handled, I can go off and see my family and do other stuff that I like to do and just step away from my computer for a bit. And so if it takes Luminar a little time to get those exports done for me, I'm happy with that trade-off. I feel really refreshed and revitalized after my holiday, so I'm really looking forward to making some new videos to share with you guys. I thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you're staying well out there, and I'll catch you in the next video. You gonna say goodbye? Oh, she's not saying goodbye. You're not saying goodbye at all, are you? You're not saying goodbye to anyone. You're absolutely shattered. Sign of a good holiday, Maisie. Sign of a good holiday.